Now, for those who are nearby in uh, this Orange County, we'd like to invite you to come and worship together with us in person at A461, Garden Grove Boulevard, Garden Grove City, California. A461, Garden Grove Boulevard, Garden Grove City, California. And we'd love to see you here on every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, for the Global Mission Vision Fellowship. And we pray that you will also serve together with us in praying for Vision 20%. The vision that said there will be an increase of 20% of the population to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So, in other words, we are praying for another great revival. And it's beginning with every one of us. A great prophetic movement, a great praise and worship movement, a great healing and deliverance movement that we are going to see is going to happen as we pray and we carry out together for Vision 20%. And today we are on 1 Samuel chapter 11. So we go one bit at a time. And last week we were talking, for the last two weeks, we were talking about the anointing. Okay, we talk about the anointing and how the anointing can transform our life and become a blessing for many other people. Today, we're going moving to 1 Samuel chapter 11 from verse 1 to 8. To 11. From verse 1 to verse 11. Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 11 from verse 1 to 11. So let us read the word of the Lord together. Nahash the Ammonites went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to him, Make a treaty with us, and we will be subject to you. But Nahash the Ammonites replied, I will make a treaty with you only on the condition that I go out the right eye of every one of you, and so bring disgrace on all Israel. What a word. Right? What a treaty that they want to make with one another. In verse number 3, The elders of Chavish said to him, Give us seven days so we can send messenger throughout Israel. If no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. And when the messengers came to give it our soul and reported these terms to the people, they all wept aloud. Just then Saul was returning from the fields behind his auction and he asked, What is wrong with everyone? Why are they weeping? Then they repeated to him what the man of Jabesh had said. When Saul heard their words, the Spirit of God came powerfully upon him and he burned with anger. He took a pair of oxen cut them into pieces and send the pieces by messenger throughout Israel, proclaiming, This is what will be done to the oxen of anyone who does not follow Saul and Samuel. Then the terror of the Lord fell on the people and they came out together as one. And that's the reason why we title our topic today as they came out together as one. When Saul mustered them at Bethlehem, the men of Israel numbered 300,000 and those of Judah 30,000. They told the messenger who had come, Say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, By the time the sun is hot tomorrow, you will be rescued. When the messengers went and reported this to the men of Jabesh, they were elated. They said to the Ammonites, Tomorrow we will surrender to you, and you can do to us whatever you like. The next day, Saul separated his men into three divisions, and during the last watch of the night, they broke into the camp of the Ammonites and slaughtered them unto the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered, so that no two of them were left together. Let us draw some of the very important that you and I can learn from this very powerful story today. The first thing that you and I need to remind ourselves is that there would be unacceptable demands in our life. And are we going to accept those demands? And it's, it seems that you see the picture here that they want to burn everything in the word of love. It seems love is good, 
but the demand to burn in order to ask for the justice of love, it seems it's not, it cannot be explained in that. It cannot be justified in that situation. And here, the story will tell us that when the Israelite, especially the Chavish people, they was also went through the annihilation before. So whenever war took place, they was very afraid. They don't want to stand up and they will fight for their freedom. Even though they know that God already announced that He's already made a new king. He's anointed a new king for them. But when Nahash, the Ammonite, begin to besiege Chavez, Gilead, all of them immediately surrender. Please make a treaty with us and we will be subject to you. And in reply, Nahash, the Ammonite said that, Yes, I will agree with that treaty. I'm not going to kill all of you, but I will gout out the right out of every one of you. And not only to gout out your eye, but also to bring the disgrace on all of the Israelites. But yet, as we see, the childish people, in Gilead also agree to that condition because it seemed to them there was no choice to make even though that they have to face with the disgrace even though their right eyes will be taken away even though pain was inflicted on everyone even though humiliation was inflicted to the people of Chavash, Gilead even though they were not very happy but they give in in that situation. They compromise instead of trusting God for another great miracle. Earlier, they already have seen the miracles that God had delivered them and all of their people. But now, they dare not trust God for a new victory anymore. And this also explains many times in our situation. Yes, we have experienced the power of God. We have also overcome many situations. But there are times in our life, it seems that we begin to compromise our faith. We begin to compromise the biblical teaching in our life. And especially for those who work, you will often hear, and it just like in our country, if you don't work on Sunday, we will not hire you. Hmm? Lord, forgive me. So that I will not go to work. I, I will not go to church, but I need the job in order to sustain my family. And it seems that's a very logical, right? But God wants us to make the day holy to Him. So that we can worship Him and we can serve Him. And there are some places, if you reveal your Christian faith, you're going to lose your job. What are you going to do in that situation? And I remember when my wife and I had an interview a, to a university. And many other people advise us, don't ever tell them that you are Christians or, or else they will not hire you in that socialist country. Don't ever tell them that you have the Bible school degree or the theological or seminary degree. Don't ever say that you are a missionary here or else they will never hire you. It seems very logical and reasonable to many people. But for me, it's not acceptable. For me, I cannot just give in to that demand just because of the job and denying my God. I want to, it seems it's a little bit strong for many of us here. But when you begin to see that when you compromise God, you begin to give in to all of situation later on. And they take from one step at a time. But yet, we give all of our documents and we talk to the school that we were Christians. We are Christians, sorry. We are Christians. And even me, I gave them the theological degree that I have learned and I have graduated. But you know what happened? We were selected among 10 PhD faith from famous, uh, eight of them was from famous university with a lot of great achievement. 
And two of us, our university have nothing to compare to their university. And yes, among three people, only three people being selected, my wife and I being selected. And to make the story short, that many times they attack us because of the position, because of power, because of finance. They want to attack us and remove us from the position because God promoted us. And they said that they are Christian, why do you use them? And at that time, the leader said, when they enter to this university, they told us they are Christian. They have the theological degree. We know all about their background. And we were saved. Hallelujah. You see that sometimes it is not very easy for us. When someone said, boyfriend and girlfriend, if you don't stay overnight with me tonight, we were over. And it seemed that that saying gave us a lot of pressure. If you don't do it, all of your benefits are to be, be gone. If you don't use drugs, you are not one of us. And many times you hear the similar things like that. It seemed logical. But those demands begin to bring us, what the Bible said, into disgrace. It begin to lead us into the path of apostasy. It's going to lead us into the path that we know that not pleasing God. You see that today, especially we are preparing for another uh, candidate for presidency once again. What are we going to choose? We see that sometime earlier they had to kneel down to compromise themselves. Many are not allowed to say all life matter, or white life matters, or brown life matter. They demand to release all the, the prostitutes. They demand to disband the police. They demand the abortion unto birth. And they give us so many, many of the very seem to be very logical and convincing evidence. But all of those things are not according to the word of God. Petty fine is acceptable. That's what they say. Dismantle the prison or release all the prisoner. And today, that if you see that so many supermarkets Especially Sister Tessin also said, even in Walmart today, almost every day, some people will come in and rob the things and just run away because of the policy that if they're not going to take be about 1,000 US dollars, nobody will chase them. And even when they enter into the supermarket, they are not allowed, the security are not allowed to open their bag. And that's why many people just go inside and just put things into their bag and just walk away. Many things seem to be good. Right? Oh, we have to love them. We have to care for them. We have to give them the second chance. But when you, you, when you and I begin to compromise sin, sins will turn back and bite us and even kill us. And that's why we are suffering today. And many shopping centers were suffering today because of some of the policy that we compromise. And now we begin become the victims even. And many people have become the victim of, of that. What are your response in those situations? What are our attitudes in those situations? What are we going to do in those situations? When the unacceptable demand put on us, you have to do things that are against God. You have to do things that is against biblical teaching. And I pray that you and I will begin to have courage and begin to step up and to trust God to overcome those situations. And those compromises always bring about the destruction. Or I call the second point here that we learn, the disastrous compromises. The compromise, it seems it may bring us some financial benefits, some material benefits. Or maybe it seems that it's open to us to some of the connection. 
But spiritually, we will be cold. We will be backslidden. Spiritually, you will walk away from God. And even ourselves, that we may face a day that we even lose our salvation and we are going to be judged on the final day. The elders of Travis said to them, Give us seven days so we can send messengers throughout Israel. And if no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. When the messenger came to Gibeon of Saul and reported this term to the people, they all wept aloud. They know the end of their life. But instead of coming to God, why don't they come to God? Earlier they already experienced the power and the deliverance of God. But now, because at the threats of the enemies, they begin to say, oh, give us more days so that we can well. Those are the seven days of agonizing. Those are the seven days of searching for hope in the secular world. Those are the days, seven days of looking for help from people who can, cannot help us. Those are the seven days of expectation, but not from the expectation from God, but the expectation of men. Seven days of failure, seven days of suffering, seven days of weeping, seven days of losses. Our compromises will draw you and I from the presence of God and even draw us from one another. And compromising always comes with the consequences of guilt, of mental torture, of physical sickness. You know it because the Holy Spirit will speak to us. But after some time when we rejected the, the word of the Holy Spirit, our heart begins to become very cold. How about us? How many months that we have compromised and it lead us to agonizing? How many months of searching for the hope in this world? How many months of looking for help? How many months of suffering because we do not want to trust God? But we trust in the promises, the networks of men which cannot save us or help us. The third thing is that the painful realization. Here we see the first thing that we have learned, the unacceptable demands may come into our life. In the workplace, in the school, or everywhere we go, there would be the unacceptable demands and you have to stand firm in the Word of God to go against those things. The second thing is that the compromising always brings many destruction. And the third thing is that even when you com compromise, you are going to realize a very painful things still happening. And what do I mean for that? He is so took a pair of oxen, cut them into pieces, and then sent the pieces by the messenger throughout Israel, proclaiming, this is what will be done to the seven, the oxen of anyone who does not follow Saul and Samuel. Then the terror of the Lord feel on the people. Why do the people feel terrified? In fact, Saul is giving them an illustration. And that illustration is that Hashas, the Ammonites, when they took over Chavez, they are not only to gout out their right eyes, they are not only to bring the disgrace to the people, but what else? They are going to divide their property. They will take away their property and including their children. They are going to cut their flesh just like Saul was cutting the auction. They will inflict more pain in the life of the people. Even they compromise. How many of us realize that? After we compromise God and compromise the biblical teaching and we realize that we still have more problems than ever before. So said that your flesh will be like this when the enemies are taken over the Israelites. They are going to cut your flesh. They are going to torture you. Your eyes will be like this when you are compromised to the demand. Your blood will be dropping like this, just like when they cut the oxen. Your blood will be dropping like this when you surrender. Your life will be broken into pieces when you surrender. Your family will be, be destroyed like this when you compromise. And even they compromise, or maybe many times we compromise. And yes, 
we listen to the boss said, if you don't go to work on Sunday, you're going to be laid up. We listen to them. We walk away from church. And after some time, the job are still gone. How many of you realize that? And then many people say, oh, I want to work on Sunday so that I can earn more. But then, later on, they realize all the money that they work is seen. One sickness took away all of their property. Even when we give in, if we, you don't stay overnight with me, we are over. We stay. We give in. We lose everything. And yet, later on, the relationship is still over. Even we follow them, yet people are still abandoning us later on. And I remember during the persecution time, one of the demands of the authority is that if you stop everything, then you will not be deported. You will be re reunited. You will be with your family. And it sounds very good, right? I was struggling a little bit on that one. But I remember the story of my father-in-law who was in prison and labor camp for 20 years because of faith. He said, if the socialist said your mother is a woman, you still need to check it. You understand? Of course, mother is a woman, and a woman is a woman. But why do we still need to check if she's a woman or not? Right? In other words, he said, don't ever believe in their word. They will never keep their promises. They promise, but they will not. And what happened? After that, I said, I talked to them that this is the word of God and no one could ever stop it. And even if you stop me, someone will do the job. And this is God's mission, not my mission. So please do not stop it. Then, as you know, they said, if you don't listen, you'll be deported. And then after that, I begin the next day, I talked together with them. And I said to them, what should I do in order to stay back? And one of the officers, suddenly, he just out of his word, he just spoke. He said, in your case, there's nothing can be done in order for you to stay. Because the order from the higher authority that you must be deported. And that's it. At that time, I begin to say, oh, yesterday you talked to me that if I stop everything, then I will be saved. And then he just looked at me. And I was just laughing. You see, if I compromise, even I compromise, the same thing will be happen. And in that critical moment, it's very difficult, I understand, to make that decision. And in the same way, maybe you want to keep your job. It's hard, I know. But you also need to show your faith so that they will also come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I have also many church members before in North Asia. And then they also have to work on Sunday because you know that during week, weekdays, many factories and even many of them are taxi drivers and they have to work on those days according to the demand of the job and the, and the boss. And I challenged them and I said that if you dare to trust God, to talk to your boss that I'm a Christian and I must worship God on Sunday. Amen. God is going to honor you. He's going to bless you back from Monday until Friday or Saturday. And Sunday you have a time off together with your family. You can relax when other people are working hard. You still have the time for God and you still have the time for your children. At the beginning, there was very hesitant. But many of them took that advice. And when they go to talk to their boss, and you know what happened? The boss even respect them more. Amen. Amen. And when you honor God, God will honor you more. And then they begin to give the testimony. Even though I don't work on Sunday, but God is going to bless me in different ways. And for those taxi drivers, said, amazingly, most of the time, like Tuesday, Thursday, they don't have a lot of customers. But then when I honor God, 
Every day I was busy and I have even more than enough money than the day that I work on Sunday. So I want to challenge you. And that is the choice that you have to make and just serve God together. And for my life, it's the same way. And you see that not only sun Sunday, but the whole weekend that I always fully committed to into the ministry. I have to do everything from Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the ministry. And I'm still being blessed in many, many different ways. So I want you to realize that the devils many times want to bring to you the deception. And it's seeing that, oh yeah, yeah, I need to work. Yeah, yeah, I need to keep the relationship. Yeah, yeah, I need to sign that contract even though it is on the table. But let us today, we only see that many things are going to happen but don't we realize that religious persecution are next to us? Even though many political, polit politicians have always promised to us, oh, when they have been elected, they will do this and do that. But today, religious persecution are still next to us. Violence, violence may happen to us at any time. Shooting could aim us at any time. Vandalizing could come to our church. Robbing could take place at our home. Murdering could be our next door. Even though we saw many of the promises, and if we are going to ask if one day this happened to our home, if one day this happened to our church, if one day it happened into our community, our church, our school, our hospital, have you many, how, how many of you already realized the painful things that is happening in our society today? Many Americans want to give up the faith, trust in God. And the rejection of that faith in God we trust leads to what? The great division and opioid crisis of the United States as it is today. The rejection of that faith, trust in God, leads to horrible immoralities of abortion and free sexes. And even today, sex with the animals is still dis dis discussing if, if, if it is going to be approved or not. You know, it's, it's disgusting. The rejection of that faith leads to the low moral and ethical confusion of what is right and what is wrong. And many young people do not know, even today, do not know what is right and what is wrong in many aspects of life. The rejection of that faith leads to the downturn of America in terms of economics, moral value, and identity crisis. The rejection of faith in God we trust also lead America to the high rate of divorce, crimes, and depression. The rejection of that faith in God we trust also lead people to violence, drug addiction, and suicides. The rejection of that faith in God also lead to the confusion of American identity and cultural disintegration. How many of you really notice about this one? The rejection of that faith lead to the thirst, the thirst, the hunger for power and control alone and not for the care of people anymore. The rejection of that faith leads to the shameless acts and horrible morality. The rejection of that faith leads to the incest and incurable diseases of HIV and AIDS. The rejection of that faith leads to the generation of fatherless and irresponsibility. The rejection of that faith leads to so many wickedness, evils, tragedies, and bondages. I can tell you more and more about that one. But let me begin to remind you the last point as we are going to close. In order to change your situation, we need to come together as one. Just like the Chabas and all the Israelites, they were attacked by the enemies. They were afraid, they were scared because they just stand by themselves. But when Saul called of the Israelites coming together, we know the end. They had the victory and the enemies were slaughtered were chasing away. Let us just come together as one. Because if you and I do not come together as one, you are going to see that today, Americans are still among the top 
in the world for immorality. They are still the top in the world for the crazy ideas or the ideas that goes against God. They are the top in the world for abortion. They are the top in the world for as the fatherless generation. They are the top in the world for opioid crisis. They are the top in the world for abomination. You go and do the search. The U.S. is number one on the list or at least number two in those lists. America is one of the top countries that have the highest grades, high, highest crimes. And BBC New York listed the United States of America among the top 10 countries with the highest crime rate in 2019. And of course today, it is, it is even more. And you know already, now our living community are not very safe anymore. And I can give you many other about crimes, about abortion, about divorce rate, America, unfortunately, are still on the top list. And if you and I are not coming together at one and pray for the changes of the country, and you and I will continue to see that depression is still among the number one list of our country. You and I are going to see the family, the assault, the murder, the homicide, the kidnapping, the sexual assault, the battery or whatever, all of the crimes and evil things are still among the number one. Are we going to congratulate the U.S. for that? No. Those are not the things that we are looking for. And we need to pray that God is going to bring us back together. We need to come together as one. We need to pray together because if you don't come together, you see that the evil people, they come together. In fact, the bad people know how to come together as one even stronger than the Christian. We always talk about the unity, but you see, and they not put another picture and you see many LGBT parade. Naked. Ugly. But they come together as one. They come again and again in order to, to fight for their rights. We know that the things that we are looking for is the best. Not only for us, for our children, but for the nation and the nation. And yet we don't come together as one. And that's why we become cold. That's why we become weak. That's why we've been eliminated. And that's why many policies that are, that are evil, that are, that are proven for evil, are still being approved. Let just like the Israelite, just like Saul, come together for vision 20%. Come together for the revival. Come together for the preaching of the gospel. Come together to bring change and transformation in the society today. Remember, it is God who will took the initiative, who empowered God, who touched the heart of the people when you and I are coming together. It's remember when we are together, God is the one who brings us that power for transformation in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you believe that? Stand up together. And as we just have a moment of prayer to respond to the word of God. Welcome, Sister Sophia. Let us pray that God is going to give us the strength. God is going to provide us the victory. And let us also realize that we have been so backslidden. We have been immovable. We have been so cold. We have been so lost. We have been so unruly. We have been so sinful. We have been so divided. We have been so defeated. And that's why the evils are on the rise today. Will you come together as one to pray for our church, our members, our family? Will you come together as one to fight against the evil? Will you come together as one in order to uphold the justice, the morality, the word of God, the faith? It doesn't matter if you, are, you and I are farmers, workers, lawyers, doctors, scientists. But when you come together, it is God who is going to give us that strength. It is God who gives us the blessing. It is God who gives us the protection. It is God who gives us the power, the anointing. And the decision is in our hand right now. We simply just take a moment and pray. And begin to reflect, God, what do you want me to do? Even in the very little things, what do you want me to do? In order to bring changes, to the nation, bring, bring changes into my life, our life, our family, our community, and our nation.
is when you and I begin to put God at the center of our life. 